that we have not been consumed. Many of us have done the things that ought to make us consumed. Many of us have found ourselves in places where we should be consumed. Many of us are scheduled to be consumed. Jesus said to Peter, Satan has desired to have you and sweep you as wheat. But thank you because your mercy says no. Your mercy are not real, only new, they are new every morning. And that's why we say glory be to your name. Because your mercy is endured forever. The message that brought all of us and our various members of our families from January to July. We look back and say, if it has not been the Lord who has been on our side, now may Israel say, we see of the Lord is our refuge, is our strength, our shield, our buckler, in whom we will trust. Thank you so much for the church as a family. Thank you because you have added to us. You have not allowed Satan to take away from us. Thank you for keeping us in the sacred place of the Most High. Helping us to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. In this family month, in this season of irreversible blessings, we open our hearts to you this morning to hear from you. If he said, early in the morning will I seek thee, my voice shall thou hear early in the morning. Early this morning, as we've come to seek you, we'll say, they that seek you shall find you. Say that commit to God must be that he is and is the reward of them that diligently seek him. As we come to seek you today, may we all find you in the name of Jesus Christ. We not just find you, whatever is missing in our lives and destiny, we find in the name of Jesus Christ. This singular meeting, we give, oh God, everyone here, testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be your wonderful name, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's put our hands together for just one more time. Somebody wants to convert their trials to triumph. Let me see you give your hands with everything in you and clapping together for him. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say to your neighbor, neighbor, say my good neighbor, my God deserve my praise. Say my God deserve my praise because of him alone. I am what I am. I have, I have not been consumed. One more time, let's put our hands together for him, everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Take your seat. I want to welcome every one of you to this wonderful service by grace. Uh, without any doubt, 
God has a major, major plan for you. And one of the things I want to assure you is that the scripture says, faithful is he who has called you, the same will do it. What he will do is not determined by your faithfulness, it's determined by his faithfulness. The reliance on your faithfulness is an error. The reliance on his faithfulness is what that is the big deal in this journey of your life. And that's why David said, I will sing of the mess of the Lord forever, and with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. Look at the neighbor and say to your neighbor, neighbor, the Lord has been faithful to me. Say, the Lord has been faithful to me. And I thank you for that. Now, very quickly, we want to look at the subject of blessing. Um, one of the things I found out is that the church does not understand the blessing subject. Uh, we don't understand it because many of us have been wrongfully taught on the blessings of God. Uh, we've been given wrong information or you've been given wrong perspective about blessing. Uh, many of the things we call blessings, they are not blessings. Many of the things we don't see as blessings, they are blessings. For example, forgiveness is a blessing. They will say, blessed is the man who sin the Lord has forgiven. A blessed man is a man who sins the Lord has forgiven. But many of us don't see that as blessing. The greatest of all blessings is to have your sins word forgiven. Forgiveness, that God says your sins are forgiven you, is the greatest of all blessings. How many of us are blessed here? Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm blessed. Come on, say, say I'm blessed because my sins are forgiven. Come on, turn to another neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know about you. I am blessed. I am blessed because my sins are forgiven. Very important to understand that, that one of the major blessings of God is for a man's sins to be forgiven him. You may not know, but it is part of blessings. So this morning, one of the things I'm trusting God to be able to do uh, is to be able to go a little deeper into the mystery of blessings. Uh, so that you can also understand the provisions that God has made for you and I. Like I said, many of the things we call blessings are not blessings. The things we don't see as blessings, they are what? They are blessings. Come on, say, I am blessed. I am blessed. All right, let me show you a scripture very quickly. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, for those of us who are Bible students, which I believe we should all be, um, one of the things you will notice is that blessing was part of the creation. Um, well, let me show you a scripture uh, that I just mentioned before we go further. T turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 4, very quickly, Romans 4. Romans chapter 4. Uh, Romans chapter 4. Very quickly. And let's read together uh, uh, one or two verses. Verses 6 to 8. Um, this is what Paul was writing about what David said in the book of Psalms. 6 to 8. Let's go together. One, two, we go. Everyone, let's go. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man. Meaning, uh, it tried to explain um, the blessings upon man. Okay? He said, even so, as David also described the blessedness of a man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. Verse 6, 7 together. Let's go to verse 7 quickly. 
saying, Blessed are they whose iniquity are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Now, in the days of the Old Testament, God does not remove sin. He covers sins. Now, there's a difference between what the blood of Jesus can do and what the blood of an animal can do. And the major difference is that in the Old Testament church, when people shed animal blood to make requests for forgiveness of transgression, God covers their sin. But that's why God told Jeremiah, and it shall come to pass in those days, that I will forgive their sins and remember them no more. Because what you have covered, you can uncover. For many years, the sins of the Amalekites were covered until they violated the rules of God and defiled Israel. And God said, I remember their sins. Because what God covers, he can remember. But when Jesus came, he did not just bring our forgiveness. He made sure that God does not remember them any longer. You may remember them, but God does not remember them. Their sins and equity that we forgive are remember them no more. Let's read verse 8 together. Now very quickly, verse 8, let's go. Blessed is the man whom the Lord will not impute sin. Meaning God will not put a sin against you or against your church. That's blessing. So if somebody tells you a blessing, say, oh, what do I have? I don't have anything. No. For the fact that your sins are forgiven, you are blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. You must understand it. A lot of us have had so many wrong mind and understanding on blessings. You have to drive big cars, live in big houses. That's what they call blessings. Those are not blessings. Those are some of the things that blessings can make happen. He said, the blessing of God make it rich. So many riches is not the blessing. It is a blessing that brings riches. But many of us think riches is blessing. No, it's not. It's not. It's not a byproduct of blessing. The blessing itself is what makes things happen for you. How many of us are blessed in this place? Before I come, come on, tell anybody. I don't know about you. I am blessed. Said as if you want to make the devil mad. I am blessed. Said one more time. I am blessed. Let's understand that. That you must understand blessings, the intricacies of blessings. Number two, very quickly. You will notice in scripture at creation from Genesis chapter 1 God never blessed until the fifth day. Read the scripture very well. It was on the fifth day. Caller, can you increase my volume on, on my monitor? It was on the fifth day God introduced for the first time the word blessing. Before the fifth day all God did was to assess his work and say they were good. But on the fifth day, God began to bless. That's very important. I'm going to tell you the reason. It's important to know so that when you walk out of here and say, this is my motto of irreversible blessing, you understand what that means. Last Sunday, this time I was in the nation of Nigeria. I was supposed to speak at a church, a conference. So, I spoke, um, I think, before I left with the vice president. And he said to me that instead of you speaking at that church conference, you'll be speaking to us at the chapel at the villa. So, where the vice president was, the ministers and everyone, I spoke at the villa at the same time last, last week, last week Sunday. I spoke there. Now, now, I was getting worried for those kind of opportunity. And the Lord told me, you are in the mode of irreversible blessing. The mode of irreversible blessing. Because I'm going to be telling you the things that blessings can do. Because many of us already have blessing, but we don't consider as blessing, so it's not working for us. We have looked down the things that are blessing because you have a wrong motive or a wrong mind on what you think blessings are. You may be driving a good car and not be blessed. 
So I said in Genesis chapter 1, God created things in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. And somebody said, God created, God worked for seven days because he didn't create rest between the first and the sixth day. So seventh day also, he created something called rest. So I agree. I agree. I mean, because there was no rest from the first day to the sixth day. So let's agree that God created rest on the seventh day. They were doing Bible, so I said, what did God create on the seventh day? And everybody said, no, he didn't create anything. He said, no, he created something that was not in the first to the sixth day. What was rest, all right? So whichever way you want to look at it, God did work for seven days. Now, in the first day, the Bible said he brought light. If you look at the second day, the Bible says he began to name heavens and the firmament he called them heavens meaning he rearranged things on the on this on the second day are you still with me now on the third day who can tell me what god did if you are looking at your bible now, you're not just looking at my face you're looking at the bible and, and there's no reason to be asking me for contractual for contract after service you understand i just went to preach there was no other thing that was uh, that was given to me glory be to god because now you begin to say, Pastor, can you write a letter for me? I, I'm only going to say this during first service, second service. I'm not going to say anything about that. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. Now, let's look at what happened here. Who can tell me what God did on the third day? So on the third day, he began to create yield, I mean, seed, seed and fruit and grass and the things that yield uh, according to itself. Then on the fourth day, began to separate the light, the night rather from the day, and the day from the night. Now, on the fifth day, which is where I want us to start from, the Bible says in verse 20 of Genesis chapter 1, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life and fowl that they may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moved it, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And the, and the winged fowl after its kind. And God saw that it was good. Look at verse 22 with me, everyone. And God did what? Blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply and feed the waters in the sea and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Now, let me read to verse 29 very quickly. And the Lord God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures after his kind, cattle and creepy things and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And the Lord made the beasts of the earth after his kind and the cattle after their kind. And everything that creeped upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeped upon the earth. Are you with me? So God created man in his own image. In his own image, he created him male and female, created he them. And let's go and read verse 28 together. Everyone read with me. Let's go. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, on the fifth day, God blessed them. On the sixth day, God blessed them. The question is, what is the similarities between what was created on the fifth day that required God to bless them and on the sixth day that required God to bless them? This will make me answer the question and bring it for the topic of this morning. Where does blessing exist? Or what part of my life does blessings exist? Is it in my hands? Is it in my body? Is it in my soul? What part of my life? Those blessings is very important. The similarities between the things created on the fifth day and on the sixth day is this. 
Let me show you a scripture very quickly. Turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And I'm going to read very quickly from verses number 19 to 21. Then once I read the scripture, I'll be able to round up um, not, too, not too long from then. Let's read together. Uh, the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 19. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 19. Come on, to tell your neighbor close to you and say, I am blessed. Come on, say, I am blessed. Now he said, for that which befalleth the sons of men, befalleth beasts. What is beast? Animals that God made. He said, there is something that is common between man and the animals. You know, I was saying, what is the similarities between these two? Because if you don't understand what I'm about to say, you will not have the right bedrock for your understanding of scripture on what may God to bless. Stay with me. He said, for that which befalleth sons of men, befalleth beasts, every one thing befalleth them, as the one died, so the other died. Yea, they have all one bread. So a man, so that a man has no preeminence above a beast for all his vanity. Meaning, if an animal stops breeding, he dies. If man stops breeding, he dies. So what keeps both beast and man alive is what? His bread. Number one, let's look at this similarity. Number one, we know that in both beast and man, we have what? Bread. Come on, write it down. Bread. Bread. Very important. Very important. You know, I've said it many times. When the scripture says, let everything that has bread, praise God. Now, trees don't breed, but they live. They, they, they have their own osmosis system, in which, or photosynthesis rather, in which they, 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 they reproduce themselves. But they are not really created to breed. You can't see a tree breeding, but it's alive. Because they don't breed, they absorb things. Now, but animals breed. If a dog stops breeding, you know the dog is dead. If a man stops breeding, you know the man is dead. So one of the things we have in common between man and beast is what? Is bread. But before that, don't forget we have blessings in common also. Because on day five, a bless. On day six, a bless. So we have blessings in common. Why do we have blessings in common? That's where I'm going. Man and beast have bread. All right, let's go to verse 20. You'll get it in a minute now, verse 20. Come on, verse 20, media. Everybody read with me. Let's go. All go into one place. All are of doors. And all turn to doors again. If man dies, he becomes doors. If an animal dies, he becomes what? Doors. So both also, that means they were brought out of the ground. They are both dust. So write down again, that, that down. But the final one, which explains the reason why God blesses from the fifth day's days. Verse 21. Thank you, Jesus. Look at verse 21. Let's go together. He said, who knoweth the word? The spirit of the man that went upward. And the spirit of the beast that went what? Down was to the earth. That's why no animal can make it to heaven. I saw that someone said, I should excuse his name. Uh, one of the leaders of one of the biggest churches, uh, go and Google what I said, who, who say animals will make it to heaven. We find out the, who the person said. I think it's called Pope or something. I think that's what it's called. He said animals are going to make it to heaven if they are good on the earth. I said no, because their spirit don't go up. Their spirit what? Goes down. Except God is under. And God is not under. I will look up to the ears. From where it's coming, not I will look down to the east from where it's coming my help. Both the spirit of an animal and man, they don't go to the same place. But both have spirit. You know why? Because every blessing we receive is put on our spirit. Every time God first blessed at creation, the natural part of human being or animal being has not been created, has not been formed. So the blessings was where? On their spirit. That's why an animal can be used by God 
to speak in the voice of man. Whatever our spirit can be used by God. May I say this to you? That's why devil can use animals too. The reason why God introduced blessings on the fifth day is because that's when spirit were created. Blessing does not exist on your personality. It exists on your word, on your spirit. So whether you have a good job or not, you are blessed. Whether you have a good thing, you are blessed. You may not have it on your hand, but you have it in your spirit. That's why John wrote one of the most not understood scripture in third John chapter 2. When he said, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper even as thy so it prospered. In fact, the original translation of the word so there, as your spirit prospers. Now, because blessings are on your spirit, as long as your spirit is prospering, you will prosper. You will prosper. So where does blessings stay in our life? Blessings stay where? In our spirit. I want to use this to explain because I'm not saying the things I said earlier about my visit as a brag. There's nothing in the physical that should place me where God took me. I'm not a politician. I don't live in Nigeria. There's nothing in the physical. I've not known the vice president until maybe two years ago. And people in such position. The people they have known for a long time are closer to them than new friends they have made. I've never given money before. In fact, you must have money to give somebody money. Because a man can't give what he does not have. Paul said, what I've received of the Lord, I give unto you. I didn't receive money from the Lord, so there's no money I can give to anybody. I'm looking for money myself. But here it is. In the physical, there's no reason why that should happen. But you don't know how to more, more God has put on spirit. That's why the Bible says, Blessed be the Lord our God, who has loaded us with spiritual blessing. What? In heaven. You don't know how much you have been loaded with. Because you consider your load as what you are physically. You don't know what in the spirit that you are loaded with. Tell your neighbor, I am fully, fully loaded. You see, you, you may be nobody to anybody now. Because look at Esther, for example. Nobody knew in Esther was a queen. When it was still, she was still living with Mordecai. You couldn't see a queen out of Esther. Because even her uncle was a gatekeeper. Very difficult to see. But she was loaded in the spirit by a blessing that her physical condition cannot dictate. That's why the wrongest thing you can do is to look down on anybody because you see there today, you don't know what is in the future. In fact, blessing is the most disguised thing I've ever seen. You don't know who is carrying it. Because even those carrying it, they don't know they are carrying it. They have no idea. There was no way anybody could have seen Esther and saw in her that once Queen Vashti was gone, Esther was the next in line. Nobody could see it coming. That's why the Bible said they built the stone that the bridges rejected. The same has become the head of the corner. He said, this is the lost doing. It is what? Marvelous in our eyes. Tell your neighbor, I'm more than what you think. Come on, say, I am much more than what you think. Say, I am much, much, much more than what you think. I need to take you very quickly to this scripture in Ephesians chapter 1. Because we are still talking about blessing. Because once you understand the subject of blessing, there are some things that will not worry you. It won't worry you because you know that I may not look like it, I may not have it in my hand, but if my heaven spirit is loaded with it, it will manifest in me. It's just a matter of time. Ephesians chapter 1, very quickly. Let's read one or two verses together. 
Ephesians chapter 1. Thank you, Jesus. Ephesians 1. Can we read from verse 1 to 3 together? Ephesians chapter 1. From verses 1 to 3. Let's go. One to we go. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be unto you. Verse 2. And peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3 together. I want to go. Blessed be the Lord God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who, listen to this, not who will bless us, who art bless us. I'm not just going to be blessed, I'm already blessed. What I'm doing now is I'm manifesting several levels of God's blessings. Where we live now, by the grace of God, we live around the same neighborhood. We just moved from one uh, two-bedroom house to another uh, three or four-bedroom house. It's just in the same neighborhood, but here it is. I've been, when I pray walk, I go from the old house, I pass through this particular place every year for or maybe every week for 13 years. I never knew a time is going to come that's where I will be staying. Many things are loaded on our blessings, but we don't know them. My blessings is not in my walk, it's in my spirit. So if I develop my spirit, I will manifest more blessings. Taking double, running up and down, is not how to be blessed. You are just laboring. That's why I tell people, a serious Christian cannot suffer. Trust me. I can tell you. I know the difference between labor and favor. I know the difference. I know the difference. Because in my walk with God, every time I develop my spirit stronger, I see the implication in the work of my hands. You can be rich without God, but you cannot be blessed without God. You don't need God to be rich. Laboring can make you rich. The Bible says, labor not to be rich like others. So my labor can make me rich. You don't need God to have money at all. But in order to be blessed, you need him. What labor will do for other people, blessing will do for you. Just as labor can make you rich, blessing can make you rich. The blessing of God make rich. And that no sorrow. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. So let's recap very quickly. Five things I've said that are very important to know about blessing. Number one, my forgiveness is a blessing. So if you don't think you are blessed, then accept your sins are not forgiven. My forgiveness. You say what? It's a blessing. Number two. Because I'm a spirit being. Because God does not put blessing on anything outside of spirit. That's why an animal can be blessed. Listen to this. The animal Jesus rode on to Jerusalem. It's a blessed animal. You know why I said so? It was not just an animal. There was a prophecy on that animal. That all Zion, behold, thy king cometh. Isaiah chapter 7. He said, who rided upon the shears? So it was an animal and a prophecy. It was an animal and prophecy. That's why I said, if you don't have prophecy as a man, you must go to God. If you can give an animal a prophecy, Lord, I need a word from you. The old that keep coming right in upon us. Yes. What another culture or tongue or interpretation called court. Because I'm a spirit being, I am blessed. Because when the Bible said he blessed them Genesis chapter 1, they have not been formed. They were formed in chapter 2. So blessing does not exist in my formation form. It exists where? In my spirit. Number three. I'm recapping very quickly. I am only manifesting my blessed nature and the things in my hands. 
Blessed be our God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessing we are in heavenly places. I'm just manifesting. I'm just manifesting. So if somebody tells you, you say you are blessed, you say I already know that. That sure I'm blessed. I'm just manifesting. So where you are is not all your blessing. You are just manifesting 2016 model of your blessing. Come on, say this is my 2016 model of my of my blessing. Yes. Children are blessings. He said, blessed is a man who has a quiver full of them. So you may not have yours now. It's, it was already in your spirit. You have not just manifest them. God is waiting there, 2017 model. You cannot forget, the more model they come out, the more options you will find on it. And I saw some cars now, they have a Wi-Fi in it. They have an internet router. Mine does not have, because it's a 20... 07 model. So those of you born in 1954, what you don't have, 2017 model, we have it. Apology to those born in 1954. There are not too many of them in this church. I'm blessed at creation. I manifest them at formation. I'm blessed at creation. What do I do? I manifest them at what? At formation. Very important. I'm blessed at creation. I manifest them at formation. The last one that I want to speak on, as I recall, I can't tell who is calling my next blessing. I can't tell who is calling my next blessing. I don't know who the person is. So that's why I can't despise anyone. The Bible said, do not forget to entertain strangers. For some have done that. Not when they were entertaining angels. You can tell. You can tell. So as you walk out of this place, I want you to walk out with this mindset and this knowledge. That I'm not just going to be blessed. I am already what? Blessed. But I'm just manifesting levels of degrees of my blessings. And if you don't know any blessing that God has given to you, know this one. That because my sins are forgiven, I am blessed. Alright? So as you go from here this week, let this understanding be in you. Let this understanding be in you. Let your spirit man be engaged. That's why you have to focus on your spiritual life. It will determine how much of blessings you enjoy. Don't be careless with it. Be serious with us. Because how far your spirit goes, how far your blessing manifests. How far you develop your spirit is how far your blessing manifests. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. So with this understanding, I, I commit you to the hands of the Almighty. As you go into this week, not just to exhibit and manifest his blessing, but through your life, other people will understand the true meaning of God's blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the only way. A man like Joseph, a man like Daniel, like the Hebrew boys, they can operate in a land they were strangers. Because it's not about who they are at formation, it's who they are at what? At creation. Stand to your feet, everyone. Lift up your hands to him. Let's close this service. Lift up your hands to him. Lift up your hands to him. Lift up your hands to him. If somebody bless, why don't you bless the one who blessed you? Is there somebody blessed? Yeah, bless the one who blessed you. Bless the one who blessed you. Bless the one who blessed you. Say, Lord, I thank you because I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. Not that I'm going to be. I am blessed. I am blessed. Now I understand. Come on, thank him. Come on, thank him. Come on, thank him. Rima Saka Paka Is anyone blessed in this place? Is anyone blessed in this place? Thank him for the blessing he has given to you. Especially forgiveness of your sins. Thank him. Say, I thank you. Go, I am blessed because all my sins are forgiven. 
I am thankful. I am thankful. I am thankful. Rima shaka pata bara. Rike bara kabra ya prokotoria. Mata bara kabra kotoria. Yes, I am blessed. Yes, I am blessed. Yes, I am blessed. Rema kama mato kubra kotoria. Maga bara kama mama maso kotoria. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, blessed be your name. In Jesus, mighty name we pray. Lift your hand and pray this prayer. Say, Father. Come and say, Father. Help me to pay attention to the health of my spirit. To the health of my spirit. To the well-being of my spirit. So I can go stronger and manifest your blessings. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Help me to pay attention to my spiritual living. To the health of my spirit. To the well-being of my spirit. That I may manifest your blessing more and more, more and more, more and more, more and more. The stronger I am spiritually, the stronger my spirit is, the more blessing we manifest. Help me, Father, to pay attention to the health of my spirit, to the well being of my spirit. In the name of Jesus, blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Put your right on your chest, everyone. Father, we thank you for your word. Open our eyes to understand that at creation we have been blessed. We put the blessing in our spirit. So if our spirit is dead, then our blessing will be dead. But if our spirit is healthy, then you will manifest your blessing. So when I say, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be held even as thy spirit prospereth. We receive a new dimension of well-being, of sound health of our spirit. So we may manifest all that you have put in our spirit, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Whatever Satan has put on our way to corrupt, to defy, to weaken our spirit, we trust you. You will give strength in our inner man to overcome this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Help us to become more spiritually healthy, more spiritually healthy as individual, as family, and as your church. That our spirit of God will be very healthy so we can manifest the blessing of Reput in us. We trust that you do this for us and many much more in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus, everyone.